Welcome to the presentation, Technical Basis of Real-Time PCR. In this short module, we'll give you an overview on sample preparation, the real-time PCR principle, the workflow, as well as the benefits of this technique. DNA is specific for every species or individual. It is built of the so-called DNTPs, the DNA building blocks A, T, C and G. PCR stands for Polymerase Chain Reaction and is a method for detecting and amplifying DNA. Most of the times you may want to simply create multiple copies of a specific piece of DNA. You are looking, for example, for an allergenic compound such as celery in soup. With real-time PCR, you can do that in real-time. Using PCR, you can detect, identify or even quantify various genes of interest, such as pathogens like Salmonella in food samples, or spoilage bacteria and yeast in beer, for instance, but also traces of GMO or allergenic compounds. And last but not least, it is also possible to check whether the beef meat in your burger is a pure beef or mixed with horse, for example. What is the workflow when using PCR test kits? First of all, the sample needs to be prepared. A very well homogenized sample is either directly weighed into the lysis tube or if looking for pathogens, for example, the sample needs to be enriched overnight, in most cases beforehand. Please note, it is very crucial to have a representative sample. Next, the DNA is isolated from the sample. The DNA extraction process frees DNA from the cell and then separates it from cellular fluid and proteins, so you are left with a pure DNA at the end. There are two possibilities to do that. First, mechanical disruption, and second, using detergents and enzymes such as proteinase K to free the DNA and dissolve cellular proteins. Once the DNA is separated, any remaining undesired material and cellular debris will be removed. Depending on the target and the matrix, our Biofarm offers different sample preparation protocols. The first step during DNA isolation is the lysis. Lysis buffer is added and the sample is incubated at high temperatures in order to break open the cell and to release the DNA. After the lysis step, the DNA is in some cases further washed and purified by using, for example, spin filters. This process takes up to one and a half hours, depending on the protocol. Afterwards, you can directly use the DNA for the PCR analysis. Next, you need to set up the PCR reactions and start the run. After approximately one hour, you get the results. Now, let's start with a PCR setup. Using the R Biofarm PCR kits, you are provided with a reaction mix. This reaction mix contains target-specific primer and probes, DNTPs, the DNA building blocks, and a buffer system containing, for instance, magnesium ions. The master mix consists of the reaction mix and the TAC polymerase. The manuals tell you how much you have to add of the enzyme to the reaction mix. This thermostable polymerase enzyme drives the PCR. Now, the DNA is added to the master mix. The tube can be then placed into the thermocycler. To understand real-time PCR, it is easier to begin with the principles of basic PCR. One PCR cycle consists of three steps. Denaturation, annealing and elongation. During the PCR run, changes in temperature are used to control the activity of the polymerase and the binding of primers. The reaction temperature is first raised to 95 degrees centigrade. At this temperature, all double-stranded DNA is melted into single strands. The temperature is then lowered to about 60 degrees centigrade. This allows the target-specific primers to bind to your specific DNA of interest. These primers are small pieces of DNA, complementary to the DNA of interest. They are needed by the polymerase in order for it to have somewhere to bind and can begin to copy the DNA strand. During the elongation step, the polymerase creates a complementary sequence of bases to any single DNA when it has a double-stranded starting point. At the end of this step, there are now twice as many copies of your target DNA as when you started.
This process of DNA amplification is needed in order to get enough DNA to get a detectable signal. Therefore, the temperature process is then repeated typically 35 up to 45 times and leading to an exponential growth of the target DNA, sufficient for reliable detection. This same principle of amplification is employed in real-time PCR. The reaction is placed into a real-time PCR machine that literally watches the reaction occur with a camera or detector. The DNA amplification is linked to the generation of fluorescence, which can then simply be detected with a camera at the end of each PCR cycle. This means, as the number of copies is increasing during the reaction, so the fluorescence is increasing. At our biofarm, we use a hydrolysis probe-based detection technology called TACMAN to generate fluorescence during the PCR. The probe consists of a fluorescent reporter and a quencher molecule. These target-specific probes are designed to bind downstream of the primers during the annealing step. As long as the reporter and quencher are physically close to each other, no fluorescence is emitted. The probe is then cleaved by the polymerase enzyme during the elongation step. By cleaving the probe, the reporter and quencher are separated, which means that the quencher no longer has its effect over the reporter and the level of fluorescence increases. This means that with every cycle of PCR, more probes are cleaved and more fluorescence is generated. Multiplex real-time PCR is a technique in which more than one target is detected in the same real-time PCR reaction. Each target is distinguished by a certain dye. During a multiplex PCR run, different reporter molecules are used. FAM is a green reporter and is used the most commonly. The R-Biofarm 4-plex PCR kits usually use also VIC, ROX and CY5. Every reporter dye emits light at a different wavelength and can be read through separate detection channels. At the end of the analysis, you then get the result for three targets and the internal amplification control. An exponential amplification curve is the result of a positive DNA sample. The baseline refers to the fluorescent signal level during the first PCR cycles of the run, in which there is only little change in fluorescence. The threshold is the level of signal that reflects a statistically significant fluorescence increase over the baseline signal. The threshold cycle, CT or crossing point, is the cycle number at which the fluorescent signal of reaction crosses the threshold and is higher than the background fluorescence. The lower the CT value, the higher was the initial DNA content in the sample. In conclusion, real-time PCR is a sensitive and target-specific method. A higher throughput can be reached by using multiplex kits. Further advantages of multiplex assays are for example the reduced costs in consumables, reagents and labour and the increased amount of information obtained from one reaction with the extra benefit of using up less limited sample DNA. Real-time PCR can be used either qualitative with absence-presence results or quantitative for allergens, GMOs and animal identification, for instance. With only one sample prep, the DNA can be used for several different PCR kits. Our Biofarm offers a broad range of real-time PCR test kits, including allergen, GMO, animal species, as well as various pathogen and spoilage detection kits. Thank you for your time and attention.